Okay, hey, it's Omega here, and I'm going to show you how to torque your rear sprocket onto your uh, sprocket carrier hub for your BMW F650 twin. Uh, so, so yesterday I thought I couldn't do it because I didn't have the wheel because you kind of want something to hold hold it down. But I I realized like oh it's a uh, it's held on by a bolt and a nut. So there's really no reason to have this. You can use um, you could use another wrench as a ha handle, basically. So what you're gonna need are so this is the first time I'm doing it, so I don't know if, it, if this is gonna work or not. But um, but yeah, it's uh, um, I'm just gonna give it a go. And really, you only get one shot at this because uh, once you use these bolts up, um, they say you can. Uh, people some people say they reuse them, but uh, I would not reuse them because my friend had a bad experience with. <laughs> With the with, with the sprocket coming loose on him, so we're gonna make sure that doesn't happen again. So, right. okay. So what you're gonna need is uh, uh, this is assuming that you've already taken the wheel off of your motorcycle, which is not too hard on a F650 GS since it has a center stamp. Uh, it just requires a very big uh, wrench or something to take the axle off. So, anyway, you got your wheel off. And then you just pull. Basically, you're just you're just gonna pull the um, the sprocket carrier hub off of the wheel. It's just it's mounted there with a bunch of rubbers in it. Um, that's uh, that's how they designed it. It's got a it's a, called a cush drive hub is what it's called. Um, and then you're gonna and then I showed you how to put the uh, the sprocket the sprocket onto the sprocket carrier. All you have to do is line up the holes and then put the bolts in. So. So that's as far as we've gotten in this step. And then for the next step uh, is uh, you're going to need some 16 millimeter wrenches. Uh, it uses a weird size uh, weird size wrench, 16. And they do fit. It does fit on the bottom, on the carrier side. So or the hub, see, actually fits in there. So um, BMW engineered it so you can get a wrench in there. <laughs> Even though the bolt's pretty big, and uh, yeah, and it'll accommodate a Craftsman wrench. This one too. A socket probably even better. So that's that's how far we've gotten. So you're gonna need some 16 millimeter wrenches or a socket, kind of like this will help, um, and a torque wrench. Uh, so we're going to use this uh, quarter inch torque wrench here with a 3 8 uh, adapter on it. And then uh, some Loctite. Some kind of uh, locking, thread locking compound. It doesn't mention... Uh, so I went to the actual BMW dealer and I asked them to look up the specs for me for to how to tighten the hub. And they, they made some revisions, but it's always been the same. Um, it's supposed to be a 10, you're supposed to torque it to 10 newton meters, and, and then you tighten it a quarter turn more. So, and then it doesn't, it, it just mentioned that there's a mechanical locking mechanism on it, and I believe they're referring to these um, nuts. These are, these are nylon locking nuts. I, I think they're nylon locking nuts. I don't think they're the metal ones. The metal ones you can reuse, but... Um, these are the nylon ones. That's probably why they're saying you don't want to reuse them. So, um, so I looked it up on this table here, and so here you got newton meters and inch pounds. So, ten newton meters is about eighty-eight inch pounds. That was the spec. Uh, let me see if I can pull up that picture. Uh, the, they, they couldn't print it out for me, but I but they said I could take a picture of this back and I will show you what it is. And I will put a subtitle below um, what what it is, but that is the picture, actual picture, right there. So here it says chain sprocket to chain sprocket carrier. M10 replace the nuts and screws. That's what we're doing. And they're brand new, and thread locking compound mechanical. So, I think the, I think that means it's a locking nut. But 
I've read somewhere that you can use like a a blue Loctite. It's a I don't I don't know. I'll look it up on what web page it said, but you're supposed to use like a Loctite two two one four or something, and that's like a blue Loctite. I have a purple Loctite. That, that should be fine. I'm just gonna slather it all over the bowl. Um, and then the tightening torque is 10 newton meters with an additional angle rotation 90 degrees. So basically, torque it to 10 newton meters, and then and then turn it an extra 90 degrees, which is a, a quarter of a full turn. Got it? That's uh, that's what it is. And so, like I mentioned, if you guys are not familiar with uh, newton meters, because we don't really use them in the U.S. Um, it is uh, 88, 88.5 inch pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and set that on my torque wrench right now. Um, I do have a Newton meter scale on it, so let's see if it's get pretty close. It was 10 Newton meters, right? This is pretty close to 10 right here. And it should be like 88 or something. So I think it's somewhere around there. It it won't hurt to do a little extra, I guess. We can just do like 90 inch pounds, which is a little more than 10. It's probably like 11 inch pounds. I won't hurt to do a little extra, I guess. It won't break. It won't break it because there's no threads. There's no threads in this carrier. Some people were saying just to torque it straight to like 40 newton meters. That's that's like four times as much. <laughs> okay, so uh, what we're gonna do first is uh, I'm gonna go get my. So you also the important thing is you want to do this before your uh, before your Loctite sets too. It's kind of it's basically a glue for your for your bolts. Okay, so. So like I said, you can do this. It ideally you probably would want to do this on the wheel, so you have something to hold it. But I'm just going to do it on a table, and I'm going to use a second wrench. Um, and it helps to have a wrench that is the similar a similar length to whatever you're using. So this is probably better than this one here because this is shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and use the longer one, or you could use something like this. This is about the same size too. But I'll have to get another socket. But the wrench does fit. Um, so the torque wrench is all set up. Um, so before, so if you remember correctly, when we when we installed, when we lined up the the sprocket and we put the bolts on, um, just make sure that the nut is on the bolt side, um, because the, I mean the, the the washer is on the bolt side, and the nut is on top without the washer. Um, this the nut doesn't need a washer. Because it's a it's a flange nut. See, it's got a little flange to it. Why can't can't just make both of them flange? So, so what you're gonna do is coat the threads with your locking compound. Mix it up a little bit, and you can see a good amount of it is gonna have. So a good amount of it is gonna have a locking compound on it. okay to put it just on like one part because you're just going to get it all, all around it. And then quickly do it, just quickly do it on all of them. Uh, like I said, we probably have to, we have to get this done before the, the locking compound dries. So just put like a big dab on it. You can see I used a lot of locking compound on this. So that should be all good. Um, yeah, so one way to mark it, uh, you can wipe the excess too if there's too much. I kind of put a little too much. <laughs> um, but 
Uh, okay, so now you're going to want to torque it to your 10 newton meters that we set earlier. So let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. And uh, I don't think it really matters what order you do it in, but we're going to do across. So try to be better. Let's do it like this. I'm going to tighten it until it bottoms out, and then I'm just going to go and tighten the other ones. And then we'll start torquing it. You can see it's moving all over the place. That's why I say it's better to have it in the wheel, but I don't have the wheel with me. I don't have that luxury. So we're going to go this way. Let's go ahead and do this one. You can definitely tell which ones that you've already done. So I'm doing it in two steps, uh, or I'm actually going to do three steps if you count the 90 degrees. Okay. So when you feel it bottom off, uh, I, I back, I stopped so that way you know you get a chance for them to all adjust. So now we're going to actually torque it. So I'm going to start with this one here. Okay, that one is good. the wrenches in there or else that will happen <laughs> okay and then we're just gonna and then what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go around this make sure we got them all okay So now we know they're all torqued at the right, um, at the same torque. So now, so meow, we're going to go ahead and uh, do our 90 degrees. So to do the 90 degrees, we're going to use a, uh, is this is not, it's not, a, is it a breaker bar? No, we're going to use this breaker bar type thing. And we're going to use this wrench. So, so definitely, you definitely want to make sure that, um, that when you do this, um, you only do it once <laughs> because we're going to actually move. So go ahead and mark something because you saw I forgot like when we were doing it. So I just did it a bunch of times. But uh, go ahead and mark some, make a mark of some sort where you started. So I started where this little, where I'm, where this silver marker mark that is. So that's where we start. And we're just going to go around it so we don't forget. So 90 degrees would be like this and then uh, so what I'm gonna do I know this is kind of it's kind of hard because 90 degrees is, is hard to yeah. 90 degrees is kind of hard to do um, squeezing but that well yeah there's this kind of a squeezing action actually you probably do it with the, I'll just do it with the wrench it's probably easier just to do it with the wrench if you if, the, if you angle the wrenches going towards each other Shouldn't be that hard. So that's about 90 degrees right there. You can see it makes a 90. Maybe it's a little more. but uh, And then I'm just going to use my thigh here. Okay, so I'm going to use... I got the wrench sitting on my thigh here. And I'm going to use this. And then I'm going to tighten it with the wrench. Um, actually, I'm going to switch this up. This to be down here, and this to be like that, and then have at it. Oops. 
Yeah, I would wear gloves if you do this. It seems kind of dangerous. So I got about almost 45 degrees. Trying to figure this out. Trying to figure out how to do this. <laughs> That's about 90 degrees right there. Boy, does it get hard after you do it. Uh, after you do it uh, half a, after you get past the 45 degree mark, it gets really hard to turn it. So I would say get some bigger wrenches. This is what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so that's pretty much the fourth one right there. This is the fifth one here. That's about 90 degrees right there. I feel good with that. Mm. Sometimes it will spin in the back a little bit, but that's okay. Oh, dude. Okay. And this is the final one, the sixth. About 90 degrees, yep. Go for it. about 90 cool okay so there it is we're done um so i wanted to amend the earlier part of the video where i said go ahead and get some wrenches out you know um make sure you have some very big breaker bars with you <laughs> with big so with the 60 millimeter sockets it helps a lot the wrenches um it's just they don't bite um it it wants to slip on the bottom all the time because there's not a whole lot of a whole lot of meat to grab on the bottom one. The top one is okay to do with the wrench, but you better have a big wrench. Because like I said, once you get to that once you get to that 45 degree angle, it's it becomes noticeably harder. Noticeably harder to uh to tighten that and then you really have to really get on it and and I just didn't have the strength to do it with these guys. So <laughs> I'm not a big uh I don't got really big muscles, you know. <laughs> um but yeah um Definitely, this this was the way to go. This this did the trick right here. So that's what it looks like when it's done. Uh, I, man, I was afraid that thing was gonna bust. This was so tight. Uh, there should be about a thread sticking out from the top. So they once again, BMW has engineered it to perfection to just barely have a little piece sticking out. Some of them have a little more than others. So that kind of worries me a little. And we did put Loctite on it. Yeah. So they'll it'll have about a thread sticking out. A thread, maybe, maybe two sticking out of it. This one I may want to do a little more. There's like barely a thread sticking out of that one. But yeah, I can get my fingernail in almost all of them. But you know, maybe they didn't. They didn't manufacture them all perfectly. Who knows? Because <laughs> I did it. I did it like they said. So, so there we go. So what we did was we did about, I would say about 10 newton meters, maybe 11. Yeah, probably we probably did around 11 newton meters. I don't really trust this torque wrench too much. I always do a little bit more, but but that's when you start breaking things, especially when you do small stuff. 
this is for small stuff so so yeah um so the torqued um so the so to to go through the process again um closing remarks um take it off your bike take the carrier off um just you just pull it right off um unbolt the old uh on old sprocket if you this in this case I didn't have the old sprocket because it was already broken we're using brand new sprocket uh, brand new hub and sprocket um, take the old one out and uh, it may yours may have different bolts I also want to note that yours may have the M8 bolts if you have a if you have the stock sprocket um, or the stock uh, hub it, it'll be a M, uh, M8 bolt it'll be smaller it'll be a little bit smaller than this these are these are M10 bolts they're they're two millimeters bigger, so uh, so this one we have to use a 16 millimeter. I'm not really sure what the uh, the M8 uses. It's probably a 14 or 15, is my guess, is what you would use. Um, and then so put the take the old sprocket out, throw the old bolts away. Don't um, supposedly people say that you you reuse some people reuse them, but after after doing that, I don't think you want to reuse them because I'm pretty sure the bolt just stretched when we did that. Um, uh, these are what they call, I think these are what they call torque to yield. Um, kind of like when you're tightening a, a head on a car, um, it actually stretches the bolt out when you when you torque it. So every time, uh, and you're so supposedly you're supposed to use brand new bolts every time. So so yeah. Um, and then put the new put the new sprocket on, line it up with the holes, stick the um, yeah, just hand tighten it a little bit and get all the bolts in there. Take each uh, nut out, put some oh crap, uh, put some locking compound on it. Uh, blue Loctite is uh, what they what is suggested. I, it's Loctite something something. I'll put the subtitle below. I'm using a purple Loctite. It's I think it's about the same as a blue Loctite. Um, do not use red. Um, red, you won't be able to get it off. Um, you have to have like a torch or something. Um, and then, so goop each bolt up, and and make sure when you put the bolts back that the, there is a washer on the bolt. Man, wow, that really just goes in there. Yeah, it fits in there perfectly. There's a little, there was a little um, thing for the for this for the bolt to go in there. Uh, and then. Um, and then uh, set your torque wrench to 10 newton meters, or or was it is it 80 to 88 inch pounds, or like eight foot? It's about eight or nine foot pounds. Uh, I I set it to about 11 newton meters. I think that's around. That's close. And we were pretty close to 10. I just wanted to make sure we didn't have less. <laughs> uh, so I, I've added a little more. I, so I think it's probably it's probably close to 10. Um, go ahead and torque each one using a uh, wrench to hold it on the bottom and uh, you can put it back in the wheel if you if you it might make it easier I don't I don't know I didn't have the wheel so um, so torque each one in a start pattern uh, or no, don't torque it yet um, and then tighten it until the uh, until it stops until it bottoms out with your torque wrench in a star pattern and then go ahead and torque it in a star pattern and then maybe do it another time and then go ahead and just just to double check um, you can mark the first one if you want like I did with the with the marker and then just go around torque it one more time and then then you know they're all torqued to the same spec and then it's time to get the big guns out go ahead and get your uh, your breaker bars out with your 16 millimeters or whatever size bolts that you're using and then uh, go to town on it so Hold, hold the um, hold the breaker bar on the bottom. Use uh, and what I was doing is I was using my leg as something to hold my thigh here. My thigh, you can barely see in the video, but I'm using my thigh, my whole my, my body pretty much to hold the wrench. It's like I have a third arm, you know. And then get it 90 degrees, and then. And then just pull on it and then kind of hold if you don't have the wheel to hold it you can just grab the sprocket with your hand here and just 
torque that sucker. Torque it to 90 degrees. As close as get it as close as you can, and then uh, and then yeah, um, I suggest I highly suggest using these instead of these. The first one I I used this, and I was like, oh dude, <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, I was putting a lot of force on it, and I felt this was gonna slip. And I was gonna bust my knuckle. So this, if uh, if it does slip, it's like you know your hand has to move a longer distance. You're not gonna bust your knuckle. Uh, and it's not as sharp. It's nice and rounded. So even if you did hit this, it probably wouldn't hurt as much. Uh, I suggest wearing gloves too. I did not wear gloves, so. but uh, I got lucky and then I didn't hurt myself. <laughs> but there you go. That's how you do it. Um, I hope you learned something. Uh, it's uh, it's important to do it uh, by the book because that's the way BMW engineered it. Um, I don't kind of I kind of don't agree with the way BMW builds their stuff. Uh, sometimes they uh you know they it's a lot of their stuff is proprietary you know they um you have to buy this stuff from them you know i'm sure you can buy some aftermarket stuff they're probably i don't know if there's aftermarket this is all this is all bmw stuff right here um bmw 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 and the bolts are from bmw the bolts look, look like they've been spray painted with <laughs> some kind of um paint it's kind of cheap looking but uh but yeah, there it is. That's the completed assembly. Isn't it? Isn't it so beautiful? And it's got all that Loctite goop on it. So um, I, I am confident that that will not come out. So and it's a nice steel sprocket. Should last a long time, long, long, long time. Long, probably longer than the chain, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Hope you learned something. Here's my out. That was the uh, how to install a. Uh, a rear sprocket on your rear sprocket carrier hub or a cush drive hub for a BMW F650 GS twin and possibly F700 and F800. All right, here's Miguel. All right, and to tell you the truth, uh, by how, how much torque we were putting on that thing, uh, I was amazed that uh, I was amazed that we didn't either bust the bolt, <laughs> break the bolt, or crack the hub or something because this is made out of aluminum this hub here so um yeah it's that's uh, no joke the amount of forces that you have to take to <laughs> to get that on there um yeah it's a uh, but you know that's german engineering for you man that's they engineered it so it, that wouldn't it wouldn't break you know <laughs> so that's the way it's supposed to be done so so i have, a, I have no problem with that i guess <laughs> But yeah, you definitely want to do this the right way, because this may happen to you. That's that's no fun. This is the old hub, and uh, yeah. So I mean, hopefully, now that it's got bigger bolts and stuff, uh, it'll be stouter. I don't know why uh, BMW put bigger bolts, but I, I I'm assuming it's probably because stuff like this happens. So so yeah, it's a safety thing. All right.